Hey guys, thank you for joining another episode. So today I'm going to show you how to take off the rear brakes of uh, 1990 to 1993 Honda Accord uh, CB7. But uh, I did a 5 lock conversion. So the actual brakes or calipers that's on it are the ones for a 94 to a 97 Honda Accord EX. So I'm going to show you how to take that off. I'm going to be taking the whole knuckle and everything off. I'm gonna do separate videos just so people don't get confused or so people who just want to see how to take off the calipers don't gotta sit through the whole ordeal of how to take off the knuckle as well on this that third so um just make sure you like make sure you guys subscribe and let me know uh in the comments what you guys think if you guys have any suggestions or anything else you like me to do um this is my car this is my stuff uh, this is my project so if you have an accord or if you have any kind of honda and stuff like that and you guys need advice just let me know and i will be more than willing to um give you guys insight on what it is that you need to do with certain things all right all right so the first thing you guys gotta do is <clears throat> jack up the car of course and so i'm using a impact drill i'm jacking it all the way up usually you want the tire to touch the ground now for those that don't know how to change tires I do have a video on how to take off the tire and one of, one of my Make sure you have a little spot where to put all your screws and nuts or whatever it is that you take off. Make sure you have a little tray or something so you don't end up losing the stuff. So as you guys can see caliper is real rusty, real old, so I'm going to spray some W40 on it. Alright, so like I said you want to hit it with some W40 to loosen it up. I'm going to be taking all this, this whole knuckle assembly off, so I'm going to hit everything with some W40. I already did the other side. So now I do this side. Uh, All right, so what I like to do is just just hit things real quick just to loosen stuff up just because it's been there for a while so now these nuts right here i believe are 70s 14 i think they come Yep, the 14. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the brake line. Usually, you would want to clamp it down so that you don't have brake fluid leak everywhere. But since I don't have the cylinder on, and I will have to bleed them once I install everything, I will just. Take it off and put it up for now. Once I store the new calipers and the master cylinder, then I'll bleed everything. So just make sure you have like a little basin or something in the bottom of the floor so you don't leak it everywhere. Me, I'm not using one because, like I said, there's no look, there's barely any brake fluid in there because I don't have the master cylinder on. 
Now, right here is a bushing. Make sure you don't lose it. Make sure you keep things together. If you want to buy a new one of these, it's better. But if it's still good, you don't have to go through the trouble. Like I said, make sure you have a little tray where you can put things. Now, you see this? It's just a regular screw somebody put in there. Please, guys, if you're going to do the job, make sure you do it the right way. Make sure you use the proper tools. Now, this is the emergency brake wire right here that I'm taking off. You don't have to do that. The only thing you have to do is take out these two wires. But like I said, since I'm taking everything off, I'm going to loosen everything up. All right, so. It's always a good idea just to tap it, just to loosen it up. You don't want to put all your force into it and end up straining yourself or something, you know, catching a hernia. You don't want to catch a hernia. So, to change the brakes, you only need to loosen one up. You, well, you need to loosen both up, but you only need to take one out. All right, once you take it out, you will open it. It's been here for a while, so. Just tap it, don't go too crazy with it. See? It's been a while, so. It's been about eight years since I changed these bricks. The car just been sitting here. So once it opens up like this, right? How about you want to loosen the the brake line and you want to take this out because you don't want it breaking or pinching or anything like that. So once it's like that, you could easily take the old brakes out. If you see these, these are brand new still. You know, I had just installed them. But uh I'm not gonna be reusing them. I'm gonna be using uh the EBC brakes so then you would take this little plate off as well and you would replace them as well as the brakes the brake pads themselves and then you would just bring this back up and close it up but like I said I'm removing the caliper itself because I'm gonna put a new one I'm not sure yet if I want to restore this one or just put a new one as you can see this is pretty pretty rusted pretty beat up so I don't know if it's worth me trying to restore it either way I'll make up my mind tonight the reason I'm taking them off is because I wanted to paint them so I can install these and the front calipers I got the RL calipers that I want to install for the front but it doesn't seem like I'll be installing these today because they look horrible. Now I'm taking these bushings off. You don't want you don't want to take these off. I'm taking these off because, like I said, I'm gonna restore these. These are a little more pain to take off. Now these these little screws they have grease on them so before you put them back in you want to make sure you grease them up i will be going through all these steps once i uh decide to reinstall the calipers and the brakes and all that but i'm gonna be sending this arm down and painting it and whatnot so if you can see in here there is two more screws right here and right here in order to take out this bracket you will have to take those two screws out if you're replacing the entire caliper with the brackets you don't have to take out these brackets right now as it is you could like I said you could install a new set of caliper a new caliper and new brake pads but let's say you want to change the rotor you want to change the rotor you have to take this bracket out because 
the rotor will not come out with this bracket in the way. Now the rotor has a little screw on it. If you guys see right here, you have the little screw. So what I did, I hit it with some W40, and now I'm gonna proceed to take that screw out. Alright, so now go ahead and remove this upper screw. There you guys can see it. millimeter that has to come out and I'm gonna remove these so like I said I'm removing the control arm so proceed to remove all this out of the way so, a little bit. now I will remove this upper screw but I will not take out the crown screw or the crown nut until I'm done done removing everything else reason being if this thing falls I don't want it hanging and I don't want it adding extra pressure to other things I'm gonna just remove it so I know I, it's not there no more but I have to do it later and everything has been greased and I've hit everything with W40 about an hour ago. So you want to do that in order for everything to be nice and loose when you take it out. Now that was a 10 millimeter, like I said, and these right here, I believe to be 12 millimeters. So I, said 12 I like to loosen them up. I like to loosen both up first before I take out one because if you just take one out the chances of the other one spinning or not wanting to come out are greater so I like to lessen those chances now I'll be changing this control arm as well I'll show all, I'll show you guys each step by step as I do it I'm gonna remove the screw right here just because I want to get it out of the way now usually these screws they're pretty rusted in there so make sure you hit, hit it with a hammer a few times you hit it with W40 a few times um, usually when I put screws in I put W40 on the screw just for the future so it can come out easier alright now these the screws back here that I was saying about are 14's Gotta go counterclockwise with it. Well, clockwise with it. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Boom. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you gotta go clockwise with it. to loosen all nuts you have to go clockwise with it to tighten them up you have to go counterclockwise with it
this, I believe this is 19, 17, 17. These are already loose when I installed the 5 lock conversion because I knew I was going to remove everything again to clean it up. To spray paint it nice so it could look nice. Now what I'm doing is, I'm securing it on one side so it's not spinning. But right now what I was doing, it was the whole thing was spinning. Make sure you put everything away. So you don't lose it. And then this just gets tapped out of the way a little bit. I just want to hit this out a little bit so I can take this off. Like that. And this screw will come out itself, but I will take that off after I'm done taking everything else off because otherwise it will drop as well so so like I said got the clockwise but I'm gonna use a socket for this to make it easy on myself Of levers as well. Couldn't do that to the bottom one because of that. Because of this piece. So I can't use the socket down there. So I have to use the key basically. So, like I said, in order to change the rotor, if you want to change the rotor, you will have to take these out. Um, I don't think you can get away with just taking one out, so I suggest just taking both out. It takes a little bit more time, but you always want to do the job right. As you can see, the rotor is basically out already. See, the rotor is basically out. So, that's the bracket. Bracket is out. I'm going to sand this. I'm painting nice. I'll take you guys through that step as well. And that's it. The rotor comes right out. The rotor just